Uh, the survey was a seven page survey, which is our typical length for a community survey. It was the first community survey conducted for the city by ETC Institute. And we did this by a method of mail first and it accompanied with a covered letter that included an online link to the online version of the survey for respondents who preferred to fill it out that way. About seven to 10 days after surveys began arriving, we began email follow-ups to respondents and then phone follow-ups were needed just to collect a few of those other groups that didn't respond well to the mailed online survey. That's really where the statistical validity comes in. If you compare your results to the census results within our margin of error of about four and a half percent at the 95% level of confidence, we are really well aligned with the census results. And that's based on race, ethnicity, uh, gender, sometimes income is one of those ones that we can measure. Uh, but what's really nice here about the community of Gallatin is that our goal was 400 surveys. Like I said, we have about 40 years of experience in doing this type of work. So when we sample for a community such as Gallatin, our job is to sample in order to receive a particular number of surveys. And we did that. But what was great to see is that the community was so thoughtful in the results. And overall, the results are very thoughtful. And I'll go into some of that when we get into some of our analysis. But we actually had 125% of our goal. Um, so we received 502 total surveys when our goal was only 400. And again, uh, it's a social science, so there is some, some give and take there. But for the most part, when we set out to collect 400 surveys, we'll maybe collect 410 or 415. Uh, but to see 502 respondents uh, respond to the survey is, is really great. Um, the sample was a random sample of all potential residential addresses within the city limits. So what we do is purchase a sample from one of the leading list brokerage firms in the country. Uh, we take every single potential residential address based on the USPS list. And then we select a random sample from that. And those are the folks that received uh, the mail and online surveys. This is a location of survey respondents. As we can see, some of the map to the left is a little sparse, but there are not a lot of homes in that area, as you all probably know. So we had a great distribution from throughout the city. As you can see here, all these red dots just indicate uh, households that completed the survey. But please understand, these results were geocoded exact location, but we strip that away and geocode these results before we deliver them to the city to their block address. So for example, somebody living at 101 Main Street is going to be geocoded to 100 Main Street. Somebody at 205 you know, Oak is going to be geocoded to 200 Oak. So these aren't the exact locations of the homes, but very close to where those respondents came from. The bottom line up front is that residents have a very positive perception of the city. So the city's performing very well. 82% of respondents indicated they're satisfied with the overall quality of life. And almost three out of four respondents indicated they're satisfied with the city as a place to raise children. So just kind of putting that into context, I know that 73 may not seem super high, but if you get four people in a room uh, and three of them say, yes, I'm very satisfied with the city as a place to raise children, I think you've won uh, that argument. So this is, Gallatin is performing very well. We'll look how those numbers stack up nationally and regionally later in the presentation. Some of the things that I was most impressed with was how you're setting the standard for the delivery of service in a couple of key areas. When we look at all of the trends data and all of the benchmarking data, uh, it's, you rated above the national average in 72% of the areas that were assessed and 74% uh, when talking about regional averages. We'll go through some of those benchmarks later. The city rated 28% above the US and, and the Southern regional average. This was the same 28% uh, above for the overall quality of services provided by the city. So you're really just smashing you know, some of our national benchmarks, which is really difficult to do because we have a lot of high performing clients who've been doing the survey for decades. And the city rated 29% above the US average in the overall quality of customer service. So your customer employees, the employees in your community that face or customer facing or face residents are actually really just setting the standard. And I say this in a lot of communities, even if it's like 15% above the national average, but to be almost 30% above the national average, as you'll see in one of the charts uh, later on, is really just outstanding. Every uh, single employee in the city of Gallatin should really get a pat on the back for, for this particular rating. Some of the top priorities for improvement uh, that we found based on our important satisfaction analysis is the flow of traffic and congestion management which I always find is the top priority in a healthy community. If we were to see something like parks and recreation or um, something you know, less uh, shiny uh, as the top priority for improvement, I would be very concerned. But the fact that folks are most concerned about tra flow of traffic and congestion management in the city is really a sign that you all are doing well in so many other areas. 
Uh, the next one was quality of the city's planning department, and we should not be confused uh, with actually the employees or the folks in the city's planning department. 90% of the respondents to the survey likely have not had direct contact with your planning department in the city of Gallatin. This is likely a direct influence of, of decisions that have been made in the city. One of the high priorities for improvement or one of the items that received lower levels of satisfied ratings was how well the city's managing growth. We believe at ATC Institute that the quality of the city's planning department is being directly influenced by some of the growth and some of the activity uh, when it comes to planning and development in the city. So please, when I talk about the top priority for improvement being the city's planning department, don't uh, confuse that with the actual staff or the actual department itself, because more than likely they're, they're carrying out orders from higher above themselves or decisions that the city's making maybe in council or things like that. So just please keep that in mind. And then the quality of city streets, another item that is a high ticket item. Uh, it's a high dollar value item. Sometimes communities have rolling street maintenance throughout their community. So a particular section might get fixed. If you live really close to that particular area, your streets didn't get fixed this summer, you might rate that a little bit lower just because you notice that Tom and Mary across the street got their street done, uh, but you haven't quite gotten yours finished yet. So that's another sign of thoughtful results in a healthy community that we're not seeing some of these key city services at the top of this list. Uh, overall perceptions. Overall, the city's performing very well. Over half of respondents gave satisfied and very satisfied responses uh, to all four of these items that were rated. Uh, the lowest being overall value you receive for your city tax dollars and fees, which is pretty common, but to keep in mind, only 16% of respondents gave dissatisfied or very dissatisfied remarks. Most of the charts that I'm gonna present this evening, uh, the blue items are satisfied or excellent good ratings. Gray is always gonna be that neutral. Uh, anything in red is always gonna be those negative ratings. What we should keep in mind is that that neutral rating is not a poor rating. Some communities who perform very low actually lump the neutral into their satisfied and very satisfied ratings. But like uh, the way that I like to interpret them uh, is that it's a passing grade. Folks either didn't have a significant interaction with one of these particular items or the city's not making a great impression or a poor impression. So that's really just kind of that average uh, neutral rating. So very low levels of satisfaction with all four items and relatively high when we compare it to the benchmarks uh, for all four items as well. When recommending Gallatin, uh, most folks recommend Gallatin as a place to live, visit and conduct business. Again, a few neutral responses, but very, very low, 10% or less, and given our margin of error, even fewer number of respondents potentially, or number of respondents in the, in the city at large uh, would be not likely or not likely at all to recommend the city for these three particular items. So again, very, very high ratings here. Uh, the overall quality of city services, this is a larger list. This is kind of the, the whole uh, kit and caboodle, the, everything that the city kind of offers at the major level. We do have a couple items at the bottom that received higher levels of dissatisfaction. Those are our top priorities for improvement and I'll let you know how we got to that uh, later in the presentation. But as we can see, most folks are very satisfied or kind of neutral. Uh, as we see here, overall quality of municipal court, 44% of respondents were neutral. And that kind of leads back to what I was saying in the previous slide where most folks, if they're gonna give that neutral rate, you're either passing um, or folks just haven't had a lot of experience with the municipal court. So that's why we see higher levels of neutral there. But overall, lots of blue on this chart, very good ratings overall here. What we did is, as I mentioned earlier, we geocoded the respondents home address to each question on the survey. And what we do is we average those responses based on particular uh, GIS shape files to help the city better understand how those responses are coming from different aspects of the city or different geographies of the city. And what we see here is the overall quality of city services is a map of the city of Gallatin. What we find is that there are a couple areas that are neutral or dissatisfied overall, but for the great vast majority of folks, uh, items are, are very satisfied or, or satisfied at the very least. One of the things that we offer and I'll talk about later in my presentation is an interactive data dashboard. One of the greatest features of that dashboard are the maps. This is really just a static map. You look at it and, and really you, you gain from what you can gain from it here. Uh, but our interactive maps that are available through our dashboard, you can actually hover over all of these areas and get a really good idea of actually the number of respondents. For example, that inner area, there might not be a lot of households there. That might be a more industrial area, but there were enough households to, to group them together. 
even 15 or 20 respondents from that area could have brought that down to a dissatisfied rating. So having those maps that are more interactive or, or a little bit easier to comprehend, but overall here, the city's doing, the, got a few examples here. Overall quality of life in Gallatin. Most folks are very satisfied or satisfied with their quality of life. Overall flow of traffic and congestion management. This is one of the top priorities for improvement. As we can see, there are some trouble areas. Most folks were neutral for the most part, but there were some, some dissatisfied respondents from throughout the city, which makes sense given it's a top priority. Overall quality of the city's planning department. I would assume that if you talk to the planning department in the city, or if you talk to some of the codes folks or some of the folks that are in charge of uh, managing and developing growth in the city, I would assume that some of these red or orangey areas, uh, they could probably tell you what's going on in some of these areas. But for the most part, neutral, uh, satisfied, or a few areas of dissatisfaction here. Uh, overall maintenance of streets, municipal buildings, and facilities. This was uh, the highest, uh, the third highest priority item. Again, some neutral areas, a lot of satisfied areas as well. And the overall quality of police services. So this item was determined to be the fourth highest priority on the list. And again, this is where I come back to the thoughtfulness of respondents and the fact that we have 125% of our 400 goal completed in surveys. Folks are very satisfied with the police department, but they think that it's very important that the city continue to maintain that police department. And this is proof here. Uh, most of the chart is dark blue. There are some areas of light blue, but as we know, some of those areas aren't densely populated. So what we should understand here is that folks really thoughtfully took this survey when they were asked to, to include what their priorities for improvement are over the next couple of years. They chose police because they want the city to maintain the level of service that the police uh, is providing to the community. So this is a really good sign. Benchmarks, really my favorite part of the presentation and the the main reason for this is that the city performed so far and above most of our benchmarking that I talked to a couple of our researchers and you actually altered some of the, our benchmarks. So some of our benchmarks were further below this, but once we got you into the database later the, earlier this uh, summer, you actually kind of shifted the bar. So some folks are actually struggling now to, to even meet expectations on, the, on these benchmarks because of some of your ratings, particularly the overall quality of services provided by the city where you're almost 20% above the national average. 10% above the average, national average and the overall quality of life in Gallatin. And then as we see here, how well the city is managing growth. Uh, you're significantly below the national average there. Although you shouldn't beat yourselves up too bad about it, the national average is less than 50% of respondents are very satisfied or satisfied with how well their cities are managing growth. So although significantly below that, we believe that is the main influencer and the main reason that uh, the city's planning department kind of came under fire in the survey results. Again, not the employees in that department because it's unlikely respondents had any direct contact with those folks, but it's likely the, the growth and development decisions that the city has made over the last couple of years. Overall quality of services, again, a lot of blue arrows, arrows here. As you can see at the bottom, a couple of the areas where you're performing below the national average are again, those areas of top priority. These are areas that we would always assume in a healthy community, a thriving community, these are going to be the items that we should see at the top of the, the priorities list. And that's exactly what we saw here. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Rosemary might have mentioned that there was some flooding recently as well, which could directly impact this overall quality of the stormwater runoff and management system. But again, very close to the national average, only nine points below it. Given our margin of error, four and a half, could be only about five points away. Street, sidewalk, and infrastructure, again, a lot of uh, blue arrows, meaning you're significantly above the national average. Accessibility of streets, sidewalks, and buildings for people with disabilities is slightly lower. Maintenance of stormwater drainage system is a direct correlation to the previous chart that we saw. But for the most part, Public Works is doing very well, especially compared to our national or regional averages. Public safety. As I mentioned earlier, folks are very satisfied with your police department. They want you to continue to invest in that police department. And we can see that based on the ratings here. The only one that was kind of aligned with the national average and the regional average was that quality of animal control, but you are still significantly above the regional average for that particular item. Customer service, this is really where you shine and all of your employees should really uh, receive some recognition recognition for this particular slide. As you can see here, 25% above the national average for the help to resolve the issue to your satisfaction. That's just astounding. So frequently residents will call the city and the person that answers the phone just is their hands are tied, either red tape or just particular city rules and they just cannot help that respondent. To see three out of four folks that answered this question say that they're satisfied, 
is just really outstanding and something that we don't see very commonly. Uh, they did what they said they would do in a timely manner. Folks aren't waiting around to get things done for respondents and for residents. Uh, prompt, accurate, complete answers to question, and most importantly, they were courteous and polite, which really goes a long way in, in all, all four of these items. Overall ratings of the community. As a place to raise children, you're very high up there, but most communities perform pretty well with that particular item. But as a place to retire in a community that's moving in the right direction, received very high ratings, significantly above the national average again. So doing very well when we talk about all of the benchmarks. And there's a few more benchmarks in the report, um, and we can develop some more benchmarks if somebody's more interested in, in some more comparisons. But for the most part, the city's performing very well, and you should all be very proud of how well the city's performing in all those areas. So priorities for investment. This is what I've kind of been alluding to the entire time. We've been talking about priorities. I've been mentioning our important satisfaction analysis. And really what that creation is not only the importance of an item, but the satisfaction with an item. If, for example, the overall quality of the municipal court, which is the bottom item on this particular chart, received very low levels of satisfaction, only 2% of respondents said that it's very important for the city to focus on that particular item over the next couple of years. So it's not wise for the city to invest more resources or to invest additional resources into fixing the municipal court because it's not going to have an overall impact on general satisfaction with the city services. The items that we want to focus on are the items that received both lower levels of satisfaction, below level, below average levels of satisfaction, and above average levels of importance, which some of those items that I pointed out in red arrows there are top priorities for importance which or for improvement, excuse me, which means that they received relatively high levels of satisfaction or of importance and relatively low levels of satisfaction. And the only outlier here is police services. The reason it's an outlier is because three quarters of respondents indicated it's one of those important services for the city to provide. For those folks here uh, that are more right-brained, this is kind of a list. Um, this is how I prefer to review this, this information. This is our important satisfaction rankings. I like to color code things. It just makes it a little bit easier at a glance to look. The items in red and pink on this list are those top priority items. The item in, in yellow are one of those items that in our professional opinion, if we don't focus or maintain the level of service in this particular item, we could see it become a high priority in the future. Everything in green means that you're performing very well. It's relatively important to respondents, but it's not overly important, which means that we shouldn't focus additional resources for these items. By no means am I saying that everything in green should be stripped of resources. It just means that we need to maintain our current level of emphasis on these particular services. For those of you that are more left-brained, um, this is kind of a, a more uh, easy to read uh, picture here. I've got some something on my text here that I'm noticing. Um, but for the most part, uh, what we're saying is that the items in the bottom right hand quadrant are those items that are opportunities for improvement, those items that we should focus additional resources on in order to improve overall satisfaction. Those items are above average importance moving from left to right and below average satisfaction moving from up to down. The overall quality of police services, as you can see, is in that top right hand quadrant. And again, just above and beyond satisfaction, uh, which kind of puts it in the top priorities for improvement, but really that should maintain our current emphasis, ensure the police have what they need to get their job done. Uh, but those three items down there at the bottom right hand uh, quadrant, those are really our main focus, our main emphasis items in order to increase overall satisfaction with the delivery of city services. On to our next slide here. Uh, this is the important satisfaction analysis for streets, sidewalks, and infrastructure quality of uh, city streets followed by maintenance of stormwater drainage and adequacy of street lighting in your community were really the top three most important items followed by three items that we again believe could potentially become higher levels of, uh, of priority if we don't maintain or continue to maintain uh, the adequacy of sidewalks cleanliness of streets and the maintenance of city street traffic signals. Parks and Recreation, we had a number of items in the high priority list here, which was a little bit interesting, um, but that's because there was a lot of importance uh, rated on each one of these particular items. So we have about five items, or six items at the top here, a few items in the middle, and then a number of items at the bottom. Uh, that again, we don't wanna decrease the level of resources given to these particular items, but no need to increase it. Uh, really, the main one, restrooms at parks and recreation facilities, our owner always says that if that's your highest priority for improvement, then you're doing something right. Um, if 
folks are the most common complaint is going to be restrooms at parks um, really you're doing a pretty good job because that's a tough one to kind of keep up with and then quality and maintenance of city parks just something that most folks in most high performing communities are always concerned with communication uh, this is one of the things that i've focused on for the last few years at etc it's something that uh, particularly is is telling in communities that perform at a lower level than Gallatin has performed. But it's always important to ensure that the city is maintaining or keeping an eye on communication sources and how folks want to receive and share information about the city. So as we see here, there's a lot of neutral responses, meaning that folks just likely aren't getting a lot of their information from some of these uh, or they're, they're not really focused on some of these items. And we'll see that in the next slide. Um, but the availability of information about programs and services, you're not performing not well, you know, less than one out of five respondents gave a dissatisfied remark, uh, but you're not performing overly well, meaning folks aren't very satisfied with this particular item. And that's really the case for all of these beyond the level of public involvement and local decision making, which is one of those give it or take it questions. Uh, you know, communities aren't satisfied when the city makes a decision uh, that they didn't feel involved with. Uh, but you know, the night that you had the vote on that particular item, there was one person in the room, uh, you know, so it's one of those items that the city should really take a look at and kind of you know, take it with a grain of salt, that particular level of involvement uh, question. Um, because as we saw tonight, there aren't a lot of people on this particular meeting, uh, but again, there, there are a few. So um, one of the things that I like to focus on more is the sources of information that folks use to get information about the city. And as we see here, the top two <laughs> sources are really not uh, city maintained sources. So we would suggest that the city try to bolster or promote more uh, some of those special messages on the water bills, city publications, and the city website. It's not that folks aren't using those particular resources, but if we were to make them more readily available, um, and I've been to your website, it's a great formatted website. I mean, it's one of the most up to date that I've seen for a lot of communities that I've worked with uh, recently. Uh, so it's definitely not the, the dissatisfaction with the website. It's just the fact that folks are more dependent upon public broadcast news, television, uh -huh. Facebook, which we are seeing trends nationally, uh, the Facebook and next door and those types of items are becoming really those main sources of information. What we see in more healthy communities that the maintained and steady sources of information, if they're coming from the city, we continue to see higher and higher levels of satisfaction. And that's because the city's really putting their, their best foot forward and giving folks that information. So uh, working with communications folks and how you can kind of bolster the website, uh, make sure that more city communication is coming directly from city hall versus Facebook or broadcast news television can be very helpful. The other side of this, is to ensure that the city's Facebook uh, is maintained properly and well, because it's difficult to get too into the weeds in the survey to determine are folks getting their information about the city on Facebook from friends and family or from the city's Facebook page. And that would be something that we would want to maybe get into a little bit more on our next survey. Uh, but we want to make sure that if we are using social media as a city, that we're keeping it up to date, it's accurate information, we're responding quickly to folks uh, when they're commenting on our posts and things of that nature. Uh, awareness. Most folks are, are not fully uh, aware or, or most so, more so fully unaware of these particular items. And that really comes directly from the fact that folks aren't getting their information directly from the city in our opinion. So that is something that I think we can really change the focus of this chart to be more blue than it is red if we focus on communication over the next couple of years. And what's really great is that the city performs so well that there aren't a lot of areas that the city really needs to, to buckle down and focus on too heavily. So communication is really one of those areas that you should be able to over the next couple of years try to try a few things, see what works, and really try to focus on, on improving communication, which in the long run is going to improve your overall satisfaction because folks are going to understand that the city's taking a proactive approach to their responses to this particular type of survey data. So it's really important. In summary, uh, the city performed very well. It's always great to have a presentation like this. I was supposed to be there in person uh, tonight. Uh, I was going to try to actually go to Tennessee and Kentucky and knock, knock a couple off the list. I like to try to hit like 30 or 40 states a year. Um, this year, I'm not even going to get close. I think I've been to four. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing, but you've, you've got an excellent uh, group of respondents. Folks were really entertained by the survey. Uh, they filled it out in great numbers, and that's always really great to see. Gallatin rated significantly higher than the national average in over 70% of the areas that were assessed, which is just really impressive. 